This is the, it's a hydrograph that was developed by the Tennessee Valley Authority. Well, it's developed by CDC and given to the engineers who were running the dams on the Tennessee Valley Authority. This was uh, after the Great Depression, so it was about 1938. And the the important characteristic of this hydrograph for mosquito control, as you see in the winter, the dam is filling, and in early April, you shut the outlet gates and you run the water level up to its maximum, to the full supply level. You peak it, then you drop it down in the springtime and you hold the reservoir steady during the spring. That prevents Okay, first the, the surcharge. That takes all the debris and all the veg floating vegetation, everything that's been collected during the, the winter and early spring, and throws it up on the far shoreline and strands it. So now you have a clean reservoir and not many places for mosquitoes to breed. They like to get in protected areas behind vegetation and debris. Then they pull it down as soon as the spring vegetation grows, hold it steady, so that the weeds do not encroach into the reservoir. They're held back by the steady water level. Then as soon as mosquitoes start producing about May, they start jiggling the water level up and down. And that does two things. It, it strands the mosquito larvae up on the banks, or when it comes down, it flushes them out into the open where the fish can pick them off. And because of the inflow and outflow requirements for these reservoirs, you could hold that steady during the early part of the spring. But by July, and incidentally, this was also the time because of higher temperatures when the mosquito production went way up, they could not only jiggle the reservoir level, they could pull the reservoir level down, which gave them some additional impact on the mosquitoes. Then by October, when it was starting to get cold, the mosquitoes were no longer breeding, they stopped that, and they just let the uh, reservoir empty out by itself. Because this is a hydrograph for an American river and American mosquitoes and American malaria, which are quite different from African. And in Africa, there are several kinds. So the challenge I give to you folks who are entomologists or biologists is come up with a similar one for Africa that will deal with the Anopheles gambia or Fonestis or whatever transmits malaria in Africa and tell us when and where we should do these jiggling exercises with the dams and reservoirs. You take this little hydrograph to the, the engineer or the hydrologist who's operating the gates on the dam. He'd love to have this, but we need an African one. This, this is for the American mosquitoes. So I challenge you folks if you want to come up with a, a similar hydrograph for Africa.